guess who's back? Back again. Back again. Uh, it is us, ladies and gentlemen, after a week off, and I have got, a, got settled in into my dorm. And uh, Richard, you're settled in? I've not moved house, though. <laughs> I mean, you've not really moved far, to be fair. No, it's like an hour and a half down the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just went a little bit more south. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Plots was just too cold. Too hot. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I wish it was too cold. That would mean I, I would have to... I- I'm still in I'm, I'm still in short sleeves. <laughs> I am, well, to be fair. Yeah, but like... There is literally... I see people, so I go to my college, and when I go to a college, I have to pass like a beach. Well, actually, I don't pass it directly. I pass it on the you overpass. <laughs> no, I, I so this is the road. This is where I'm walking, and the beach is down, down here. Mm-hmm. And so I always, you know, and I always see people swimming. And I'm like, should have, should have taken my swim trunks with me. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, uh, a lot has happened. Yeah. Yeah, we've had a fortnight, and yeah, we've had the Nations League. Yep, we uh, missed but... our war preview in, in terms of between us. We did, we did, but uh, we have the review. We do, yes. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, I mean, let's start chronologically. Let's start with the things that have gone, gone, and gone at this point in time. Uh, so, Dinamo Monaco two two. Mm-hmm. Dinamo was, I mean, amazing compared to the game against Bayern. They actually, you know, were, were competitive. I mean, they still scored two. They so still no scored improve, two. No improvement there. Yeah, they the the attacking output is still the same, but the defensive yeah. output is seven goals better. Yeah. Sadly, they conceded two, which <laughs> I mean, yeah. Anyways, let me retrace my mind back to the game. Uh, so first half, very boring. Uh, up until Petar Sucic decides to become Lionel Messi, but I think Salisu on his ass and lob Philip Kuhn, you know, yeah. just just calmly, just you know, as you do, as Petar Sucic does. Uh, I mean, the rest of the first half, I mean, we had that chance, and what like in the first 10 minutes that Monaco had, mm-hmm. which came off a very weird bounce, and then absolutely amazing save. Yeah, I mean. Sadly, he, you know, he kind of said, you know what, guys, you can have a goal. I know I saved that big chance, have this one <laughs> on the corner. But uh, yeah, uh, second goal, Martin Baturina. I mean, we, we spoke about him uh, last week, both of us, to uh, the, is it called the Herald? The Herald, yeah. The Herald, yeah. I mean, amazing. Just, we'll also get to Baturina in, the, in, this, in, in this last game against Poland or Croatia. But I mean, what a goal! He, he could have made a pass. He that that kind of did. I, I was watching the match. I'm like, you can make a pass. Oh, you're still gonna keep the ball. Oh, you're still you're gonna shoot. Oh, okay, fine. Okay, you scored. Fair enough. I understand. And I that's, understand. That's really what we've expected from him. From at some point during this Champions League campaign, that sort of moment that puts X million on his valuation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I mean. Obviously. It's come out that they're going to have a chat with him about contract, but I mean, really, if if you're his agent, the only thing you need to be saying is, yeah, um, let's lower, let's have a nice minimum fee release clause, and uh, we're fine. Yeah, I mean, I think Dynamo will probably just want to maybe just you know like twenty five million maybe now. Yeah. <laughs> You know, he performed well in the in the last Champions League game, and he also performed in the Nations League. So you know, they just pumped that a little bit, just just a little. But uh, yeah, I mean, after those two goals, uh, Monaco, I mean, started you know attacking, as per, and as we as I said, Nevstich makes a big mistake coming out of over corner. I think he collides with Bernoyer. Yeah, yeah, he collides with Bernoyer. I think for the goal, uh, I mean, just poor. I mean, uh, poor. Uh, what am I? What's the word I'm looking for? Poor command. Field view. No, poor. Poor like positioning. By I mean, not. I mean, somebody made the mistake. 
in, in the positioning. So, uh, but also, I mean, you just gotta communicate better to, to not let that happen. But yeah, sadly, but it's still two one. So you know, you still have time. And foul in the box. It's a it's a penalty kick. Bernoer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like you say, I mean, with with the first one, obviously, what you can't be doing is running into your own player. It's um, and calling for a foul, and, and and calling for a foul as well. I mean, it's in a way, it's sort of it's what Nevers should do in terms of going down and asking for a foul. Because how many times do you see goalkeepers do that and get given the benefit of the doubt? Yeah. So I understand, but also you run into your own guy, and like you say, I mean, there's no question on the on the penalty and an easy finish. It really is. It's two points thrown away. Um, for one thing, yeah, it is. Half time, it shouldn't be. Yeah, even if the two say two nil is the most dangerous score. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it's a point, and it's a point that lifts them off the bottom. Yeah, you know, they're, they're know, now last. <laughs> no, the twenty eighth now. Um, which still kind of sounds like a position that should be last, but um, yeah, I mean, you got to think who's below you, who, who's below Dino. You know, obviously, young boys we you know are in absolutely terrible form. Slovan Bratislava Slovan. are just going to Salzburg. Take. Yeah, um, but, well, both the RBs, Salzburg and Leipzig. Yeah, yeah, actually both. And you know Milan. So you know it. At this point, the table doesn't really matter. I think is is the point. Yeah, exactly. And all you can do really is just focus on your next game, which is like you say, Salzburg, who aren't in great, haven't been in great shape um, domestically. You know, they're only fifth in the nor in Europe, league. nor in Europe. Um, you know, Brest put four past them. Stone and put five, put five. yeah, the, the just I think four days later, yeah. So you've definitely got there's definitely a good chance for Dino, you know, Sparta put three, beat them three nil as well. So you know, that side that that sort of size of side that's similar to Dinamo, yeah, are doing that to Salzburg. So the, again, there has to be a very fair chance that Dinamo can get a result there. Yeah, but uh, I mean to to get back onto the Monaco game. If anybody offered Dynamo a draw before the game, you, you obviously take it. Yeah, you, definitely. the The whole point of this match was to get something, and they got something. Not in the best way, because obviously leading two 0 and after what seventy minutes, you're expected to you know take that to the end. Yeah. But obviously, two mistakes leading to two goals. Not, not yeah, not not the best way to lose it, but. You lost it, anyways. You got a point. You know, you still have a chance. You got a point against Monaco. Now you gotta play Salzburg, and as we said, Salzburg disastrous form this season. The Sturmgras is really, you know, uh, flipping the head in Austria, in Austrian football. And you know, you also say, you know, Monaco came into it in exceptional form. So yeah, you know, it, it's not obviously it's not the result you wanted because of where. Think things were at that point in time during the game, but yeah, you know, it's more than they could have hoped for from that particular match at that particular time, and it's yeah. it's point proved, really. It is, and Bielitsa, I mean, he got sent off, but in the short time he had to prepare the match, Dinamo looked much better with the free at the back. Uh, Sushemishus did their job, but Turn obviously did his job phenomenally. Petkovic was well. Petkovic. I mean, yeah. it was just it was just one of those games where Petkovic, you know, didn't produce anything special, but still was okay. Yeah, I it, mean, it, it, it's early. What we see next this coming weekend, and yeah, against us, we're going to be far more representative now. He's had yeah the chance to get some good time on the training pitch. Um, with yeah, a lot of the players, and obviously with Petkovic in form. Um, again, as we'll touch on later. You know, really, they have to fancy the chances. They have to, and I, I do, because obviously the next game is Salzburg. If you win that, that's four points, and the next is Slovan Bratislava. Which, if you want any chance at having a playoff spot for the knockouts, you gotta beat Slovan. Yeah, and and easily. 
and yeah, and you, and you gotta pump up the gold difference because minus seven will not help you at all. No, no. Yeah, imagine that a gold difference in a league phase vo won't help you at all. No, but, but I mean, imagine, imagine having gold difference of plus four after game week one, and then a gold difference of minus two after game week two. You know, <laughs> that's an well, opponent later on. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Uh, should we get? I mean, we surely covered this because I mean, if you wanted anything more, if I mean, if you found out anything about it, more about the match, you found out about it up until now because it's been a week and a half since the match, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, we can't really go into depth, nor do we want to, because there is bigger news, bigger yeah. actual current news going going uh going on right now. But, anyways, high and L last week. Yes. Was it last week? No, it was well, a week and a half. I mean, ago now. Yeah, a week yeah. and a half. Yeah, a week and a half ago. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this round started off with, I mean, Istra being Istra and beating Osijek as they do every season mm -hmm. at home, uh, two one. Of, I mean, let me try and remember. Yeah, Luka Jelnic own goal. Uh, <laughs> own goal. I mean, technically two own goals. Both goals were given as, as an own goal to Luka Jelnic, and then he got injured in the twenty eighth. So you know. Not his best day. I I don't think I I think if anybody produces that kind of performance, I think that's like, I mean you you're probably gonna be memed memed upon not just online but by your own family too at that point. <laughs> Sunday roast wasn't fun. Luca, no. how are you? How are you? Oh, you're injured. Yeah, I saw you also scored two goals for, against your own team. Yeah. Um. But obviously, it weren't terrible, which is obviously why they lost. Um, I mean, in, in the second half, they were okay. In the first half... Uh -uh. Yeah. It was that old game of two halves, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but, yeah. I think this is what Easter... What we want to see them do. Um, yeah. You know, firstly, get the goals early so they can actually get themselves into a state where they can defend something and then defend it. Um, yeah, you know they were abs. They were, you know, you can say obviously okay they did concede. It was a sloppy goal to concede in terms of it being from a corner, but for the remainder of the the defense, sorry, for, for the remainder of of what they had to defend, they dealt with it very well. Yeah, but I mean that was in the 88th minute, and you still had like I mean like seven more minutes. Yeah, seven more minutes after the goal, because six yeah. minutes of added time. So I mean that was that, that goal came like after like ten minutes of Osijek domination. So it was coming, and I mean you're you're leading two 0 You can allow one, just don't allow, allow the second. Yeah. Don't give don't give don't give up a do, do not give up a penalty like Dinamo. Okay, and they did that. And to be fair, Osijek didn't have a shot after the goal. Yeah. Which tells you how much you know the plan Bistro worked. And okay, yeah, you know when you against you two up against a decent outfit that you're going to have periods where you're under pressure yeah obviously you're leading to you're, you're consciously going to be defending it yeah exactly but the, the difference here is you know rather than conceding four like they had against Rijeka let's say you know, yeah. they, they kept it down to one um, they were much more professional it's fair to say yeah and they got the win and they uh, they're now still in front of Osijek which I mean I mean, jump Osijek now still in front. Jump Osijek, Osijek obviously seventh after the first quarter of the of the final. Yikes! <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, just just ten points, but it helps you that only Varazdin is fourth with twelve, so you're not that far behind. No, no one's really, no one's. I mean, it's probably really a story sort of for other sides in the league as well but no one's really taken advantage of the poor form of others yeah nobody uh Gorica. two very good goals two very good goals i mean the first goal from vankovic absolutely magical yes yeah and but a uh, revanchish as well a, a really yeah. good hit and okay they didn't have Dominance in in the game, um, you know, it was a bit of a nothing game in in general. I, yeah, 
but you know that's sort of follow the Rieka template of yeah, yeah they're going from twenty five yards. They're going from twenty five. They're yards going. Fine. Yeah. yeah, have a shot. Yeah, why not? Have have a dig. If you score, you score. If you don't, well, it's nil nil. Yeah, exactly. But I suppose yeah, the the main fallout. I suppose we may as well touch it on out is sort of what's happened at Goretzka and Shibnik in the inter- well Goretzka and Shibnik. I mean, Goretzka is obviously in the middle of it because there's the I don't know if the right term is takeover going on. No, it's not. A, it's not a sale of the club. So yeah. uh, Nedelchenko said that it's a transition, where uh, they're becoming. Well, Goretzka is transitioning, as the Chernko said, from a, a, an association uh, to a joint stock company. So they ha- they're going to have a majority owner soon, which will you know fund the fund the club a little bit and you know up the budget, help the club you know sustain themselves and actually spend some money. Yeah, drain the pitch for a start. Please end the stadium. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean it's it's good to see because I mean nobody in Croatia is probably you know in the uh, in the highness. I'm saying not actually in Croatia, just the highness is probably not gonna provide that money. No, no, they've got 14 million going elsewhere apparently. Yeah, uh, which is not enough money. But anyway, um, <laughs> um, obviously changes in the dugout as well. Yeah, uh, Rakovic got sacked after the defeat, and uh, I mean, just just like what five days later, Mario Tardovic gets sacked by Shibanik, and Tardovic and Gorica is just like, hey, actually, no, no, Chunko, the president is like, Mario, you just got sacked. We just sacked our manager. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah you get what I'm saying yeah and, and they got um, what they were saying <laughs> and I suppose that probably means although it's slightly out of order the next game we should talk about obviously is High Look Stubenik. yeah and it's the first was it the first game maybe the first or the second game you mean by High Look absolutely dominating High Look absolutely dominating but also Stubenik just looking like okay maybe you don't really belong um near the top half of the table i think it's only really Rieka where it's been similar in terms of not just the conceded but also they created yeah. nothing yeah uh i mean i mean this was the second game where Hajduk absolutely dominated and was it was Hajduk Gorica, the last one where Hajduk also scored four but they conceded early which yeah. we obviously talked about but uh yeah, I mean, amazing match from Hajduk. I mean, immediately scoring in the second minute, Timar Rakitic getting his first goal for the club. Amazing. Uh, Bruno Durdov being Bruno Durdov at 16, you know, just dominating for some reason. Like, chill down, you're 16. Like, you have you, you have an essay on Monday. Like, you know, you, you got to study. What, what are you doing on a football pitch? Yeah, I don't think he needs to worry about homework. <laughs> imagine, imagine if you're like the teacher, you're like, Bruno... You didn't do your homework. Why? And he's and he's just like, ma'am, you know why. Yeah, he, I mean, you're not putting that kid in detention, are you? No. And if you do, then the torcida will be at your front door, probably. Yep. <laughs> Marco Marco Levi is gonna come to the parent teacher conference. He's Levi is just gonna say, hey, just let, let it slip, let, let let it pass. He's gonna be sold for like fifteen million, maybe twenty, you know, in in a, in a year or two. For the past, yeah, uh, but like you say, I mean, it was a top of a, a, to- a whole game performance, it's, yeah, just amazing from Hyduk, yeah. Um, I think this is this is again, you know, we sort of said what we want to see, from, it's just sort of what we want to see from Hyduk all year is getting that goal early and then actually just making your dominance over 90 minutes pay rather than getting into a second half. Having not scored and you're just nervous and it's turgid and doesn't. Yeah, go I mean, yeah, you just have the ball and just meh. Yeah, yeah, that's what there's been too much of. That's been the problem. So obviously, Courage went, and then I don't really know what Tibnik were up to. So um, I mean, 
I mean, so it's not. I, I don't. I hope it's not because of the defeat, but it's mostly problems with fin financial, the the financial situation at Shibani because some players, maybe even Sadovich, haven't gotten paid, haven't gotten right. their uh, salaries, which was the talk after. I mean, at the start of the season, I think after they beat Tosiak even, or like after the second match, mm -hmm. that they just didn't have money, and Richard has gotten bored by financial talk. No, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, no, no, I'm joking. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm joking. But uh, yeah, I, there were some financial problems, and even after a Shibanik win, I think after the second or third win for Shibanik, there were talks that he may go. Mm -hmm. But obviously, he stayed a little bit longer. And after this defeat, I think either the board just said we'll bring somebody new. Yeah, and it's they did. Gross, they <laughs> and they did. They brought in Marco Cartello. Uh, and they also brought in a uh, plush native uh, who's going to be one of his assistant managers, who is uh, Orsulic, Mario Marin Orsulic, who mm -hmm. will, I think, I think, I think Dalmatiski Portal reported that Marin Orsulic will he has to get his uh, a coaching license so he can actually, you know, manage the club. So I think Marin Orsulic will eventually, eventually get promoted as the official manager after so, he gets the license. It's like a heart. Um, Stephen A. Smith and the other guy they had there. When don't really Steve... follow. Don't really follow Scottish football, mate. Yeah. They... All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but that that that's what the, that's what they did. He, Smith couldn't manage in Europe. Yeah. Didn't have the pro license, so they had, yeah yeah um, someone who had a pro license in to do it alongside him. Yeah. Um, when I first read that, I'm just like, guys, Rijeka tried this with Ragnar Tadic and. Who's yeah. the other he's the Orient manager? Um I know who you mean. Yeah, the, the, essentially Rieka tried like two managers, you know, actual managers at once. Nobody knew who was, you know, I, the actual manager. And yeah. And and it showed. Yeah. Uh yeah, at least they didn't bring Cersei Cos Cosme in. No, no, he would cost too much. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh <laughs> Actually, I want to touch. Anthony yeah. Collick scored a goal. He did, yes. He criticized him so much. And yeah. He uh, showed you up. No. So, I I hate Collick on the wing. On the wing, I do not want to see Collick on the wing ever again. That's what I absolutely despise. Because if you have Buke on the bench, if you have even a 15-year-old on the bench, start him. Do not show Collick on the wing, please, ever again. And uh, in behind Levaya, because obviously Levaya isn't going to run, as Gattuso said, Gattu Levaya isn't going to run, so you need somebody to do the dirty work, which Kalik is always going to do. Yeah. And he does it. And he got his, you know, work repaid for him by the goal. Not, not the best, I mean, it's a nice finish, but it's it's a it's a sloppy finish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's... Um... Like I said, it's 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 a good poke in, in terms yeah. of to actually get it out and get it around, but it's ugly looking. Yeah, it's it's ugly looking, but uh, it's a goal. No matter it's... how you score, you score it. So I'm I'm thankful for him. But which was amazing this game. Sadly, he's now injured. So yeah. I had I have to make a change in my fantasy team. So I uh, thank you, Croatia under twenty ones, actually Greece <laughs> under twenty ones who who injured them. Thank you very much. Uh, so yeah. But uh, yeah, Dayaku was fine. Diallo was meh. But everybody else was on point. Even Kurgovic on, on the right back, who's really, you know, for some reason playing got right back, but does perfectly. So can really question Gattuso on that matter. Yeah, he seems to have, I don't want to say come into his own, but I think he, the um, his skills in terms of being able to shift the ball across the field yeah. um, have really been shown quite well by playing there. Um, and you know, from from my own person, I just like seeing inverted wing back, full full slash wing backs, and he's able to to naturally do that quite well. Yeah, but yeah, because I mean, he's obviously left footer, so it suits him more in that size. So he can just, yeah. so especially it's if he's a, cutting in. It's a positive for his development, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Slavin Riek. Yeah, nothing happened. <laughs> really. <laughs> apart, apart from uh, one thing, Richard. I... Oh, it was a week and a half ago. I've forgotten. Go on. 
the disallowed i mean not even we can't call it disallowed goal because it was it couldn't have even been disallowed we didn't have the time we are didn't have time to disallow it the uh, the slamming goal after the corner zebets calls a foul yes, yes. Yeah. yeah yeah that <laughs> <laughs> uh, and zebets won't officiate uh final game uh, this season for the for the remainder but he will probably be in in the var position so that that's what he, if you make a mistake see you're still gonna you're still gonna have a job just not the main job yeah which yeah okay fair enough i've forgotten that yeah <laughs> so now now that i remind you uh what's your thoughts on it because he by the looks of it called the foul on smolchich and whoever was co- was uh I mean, marking smolchich at the corner pulling each other's shirts after that addition, my thoughts is people watch this, uh, slash listen to this. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's um, not exactly news that there's issues with refereeing. Um, yeah, especially here. Yeah, it's good that there's actually action taken for it for once. Um, yeah. Or at least, you know, effective action is going to uh, protect the rest of the season, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. But still yeah it shouldn't be happening in the first place and that's a that's a standard thing i mean that's yeah i i don't know the referee education in croatia i'll admit i know it's sort of that, that education aspect's coming to base quite a bit over the past week so i was looking at um the pro license costs and things like that which is it's surprisingly reasonable in, in croatia how much is um, it? how much is it it was 6k well, I mean, I mean, pro license, yeah. I mean, fair enough. You're, that, that's a living you're going to make out of it if you get it. Yeah, um, so which is pretty reasonable. Uh, yeah, compared to a lot of countries. Um, but obviously, that's it's, it's an education thing in terms of not getting the right people and not educating them highly enough. Yeah, like you say. Um, I, I just watched it back. I mean, there's nothing there that he could possibly. Have called anything for, but he did. And yeah, and immediately, and immediately too, like immediately. Yeah. Not yeah, even it... two, not even two things about it because it's a corner. Something is probably gonna happen, like either a goal or somebody. You know, something's gonna happen. It could be a goal. It's a corner, but he still yeah. calls it before the ball even lands in the box. I mean, that's the thing. And again, you know, this is probably something where you you question the actual direction from above. Because surely you just let it play out and let VAR make that decision, yeah. Rather than doing what he did, which is calling it far too early. Um, you know, there is a bit of pushing and shoving a little bit, but it, you know, when they're preparing, it's not. Uh, yeah, but it's not. It's it's both both players are pulling on each other's shirts, like exactly. Yeah, it's nothing. It always you don't happens see at every corner. <laughs> Yeah, if somebody puts somebody down like full force, then okay, I get it. It's a clear foul. If somebody yeah. headbutted someone, okay, fair enough. If somebody yeah. bit someone like Luis Suarez, you know, I get it. <laughs> but if you're if they're shirt pulling, they're fighting for the ball, then I mean, let it play out. If somebody falls down, then you then you can potentially call a foul. But nobody went down. Nobody even called for a foul. Yeah, actually, just while you mentioned Suarez, it's just something that. Not irritated me over the international break. Osmaic, um, I assume you saw for Preston, bit of player, re- fairly recently. Okay. And then yeah, oh yeah, I saw. Oh yeah, I, oh I remember that. Yeah. Scored while I was waiting for the FA tribunal, and then was on international duty for Montenegro this week. <laughs> My, I mean, some things you you would think the bands would just go across everything. Yeah across federations and you know who who's speaking to each other here because i think nobody guy, apparently a guy getting an eight game ban for biting someone probably shouldn't really but just be like hey all right i'm fit for you mr president <laughs> <laughs> listen he's like president was like you but someone fair enough let's have a beer then you can play yeah exactly <laughs> they lost anyway it doesn't matter but <laughs> yeah i mean it's montenegro yeah but yeah, I mean, I, I remember seeing that, and it, it wasn't even the ref did the ref at the game did nothing, right? He booked the player who got bit. 
Yeah, he yeah he he booked them for some reason, even though he was like he fucking bit me. You see this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you get booked for it, but yeah. Uh, I mean, anything else about the match? I don't. I don't think so. No. Uh, I can't really think of it. I mean, Slumin was good. I mean, that's one thing that we can get out of that that Slumin actually played a good match against Ria and Ria were just not up to par. Yeah. Um. Well. Not the first week in for the second week in a row. Um, I mean, yeah, but that was the derby, so you, you can yeah. understand that it, 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 it was. But I mean, I think that's sort of plays into what I mentioned with I think earlier in terms of no one's taking advantage of other teams, poor yeah, form, and that's been what's happened. I, yeah, that hide at Rieka game, you know, that's what happened for Dinamo just to let them back in it, and yeah. for Rieka. Again, you know, you could have gone into the break too clear of Dinamo. Okay, it's two points, but you still, it's they're still in front still of them. Something moral there, yeah. Um, and instead, you have one point. Yeah, it's just not punishing sides. And Dinamo are back to doing what they do in, in terms of winning games. Um, it, yeah, uh, obviously against Farazim. It was just the one nil and just Cordoba. Yeah, easy. Come on, Cordoba. That was the day I uh, so I mostly missed the match. I only arrived like twenty minutes before the end because I obviously mm. the, I, I moved on Sunday actually here. <laughs> uh, so uh, I was like, so yeah, I kind of missed it, but I I caught some of it. I I saw the goal, Martin Maturna, beautiful cross, Cordoba heads it, and after that, from what I. I mean, read and saw not much. Varazin had some good chances at the post. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, the, the Tepšić actually hit the post in the fifth minute, but after that, it was just... Yeah, I mean, this, this thing, at the end of the day, if you're going to leave, I mean, even if he's a winger, unmarked in the middle of the goal, six yards out, then yeah. you're going to concede a goal, which is, it, it's surprising, because, you know, you think um, Varazin better than... The, the better than that. Uh, Tepsic was very unlucky. You know, it's like it hit, hit yeah. the post and it hit the inside of the post and just bounced yeah. back in nicely in the keeper's hands. Um, but like you say, they didn't really create much after that. You know, that Tepsic shot. Tepsic header was by far the best opportunity they had. Um, yeah, but they were facing Mitrovsky Dynamo. So. A, yeah, Mitrovsky had a. Th- Decent um, effort later on, but yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. We also it, saw Chorich for on, on the pitch for the first time. Yeah, we did. Came as came in as a substitute. I mean, didn't do much. Had a few passes, but anything else he tried just didn't didn't accom- didn't accomplish it. No, which has been the story of his career. After Chorich, few years. yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, to speak about the lineup from Varazin, they started with a 5-4-1, which eventually, I mean, you know, they were just like, let's survive the first half, which they didn't because they conceded, and then let's attack in the second. Yeah, which isn't a, a bad plan. Um, yeah, but... You conceded, so... Yeah, but you conceded, and yeah, at the end of the day, if you're starting the game without your best attacking player on the pitch... Uh, then that's going to be an issue for you getting out, particularly, let's say, when you concede fairly early. Yeah, somebody got bit. Wait, the, who, who got bit? Was it Mar- somebody got bit again by a spider, I think. <laughs> oh, I, I just forgot. I I, I should have bookmarked it. <laughs> Peter Parker? <laughs> uh... Fuck. Who, who, somebody got bit. I think it's a Varazin player. I Shit. Somebody, because I remember Franjo Ivanovic had an interview, I think, the day before, like, around that time. Somebody else got bit. Who got bit? Can I find it? This is... I'm quickly searching. So am I, but I'm just seeing Franjo Ivanovic, Franjo Ivanovic, so... I've just anyway. seen pictures of spiders, to be honest. <laughs> And Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Croatia Scotland. Yes. 
you didn't watch the match, which I didn't. I was um, at the rugby final at Old Trafford. You were, yeah. Uh, yeah, Scotland nine, took the... finished nine two. It was like a Dynamo game. <laughs> um... <laughs> See, Dynamo should have played rugby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, then uh, I mean, they might not have won, but uh, it would have no. been less about To be fair, they do have um, in the the rugby league equivalent of the FA Cup. They have um, sides from across Europe, so they do actually have um, uh, Svesta side in. So we could have that in rugby league. Okay. So I mean, anyways, <laughs> to go back to the match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To go back to the match, uh, Scotland took the lead, which I mean, Ryan Ryan Christie just I mean, bit of a mistake on our end, lucky bounce. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's as unlucky as you can get, really, in terms of it's not even if he takes complete air shot, it goes out harmlessly. Instead, just slices over his own head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it lands nice for Christie. Now, I mean, Christie doesn't score much. Um, because he's mainly seen taking shots from about 20, 25 yards and putting them yeah. into orbit. Um, <laughs> so it's quite an achievement for him to actually have you know got on target, never mind scored. And as we saw later on in the game, um, he had an equally good chance and put it miles wide, which is far more like the Ryan Christie we used to see. Yeah. Uh, Lucas Ucic, obviously, with the with the mistake. I mean, I can't even call it a mistake. It was just yeah. unlucky. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's that sort of thing that it happens. Yeah, like, once every few games, and it's just your bad luck that it's happened in a position I mean, in the park. It happens. Yeah. It happens. It happens at corners, especially. Just you don't notice it because you know somebody else is behind the behind a player who, who makes the mistake and just clears the ball yeah but here obviously nobody got to clear the ball because christy got to it first yeah, uh but there at the back yeah yeah uh but thankfully uh we got straight back into the game like three minutes later as igor matanovic after missing 50 chances against portugal and poland last last month he finally scored yeah nice finish um... Yeah, ever, I think that's going to be one of the uh, things we'll say quite a bit. Nice finish. Um, it's a great pullback for Perisic. Yeah, um, but Perisic obviously played this game was very good. I'm not sure uh, against Scotland. Meant, I'm not sure he meant it for Matanovic. Is the only thing I'll say. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He didn't. <laughs> yeah, um, but it doesn't matter because it's a yeah, it's a fantastic hit. No, it's this. It's the. Uh, it's similar to the goal that Hajduk scored against Dinamo when we beat when we beat them one 0 at Poljud by Nikola Kalnic. If you remember that goal, where Mekanovic, I think Vukovic, you see Vukovic was uh, at the top of the box. Yeah, and Mekanovic kind of sends a hard, not a harder pass than usual, but Kalnic kind of takes, the, stretches out his left foot to get to it, takes it and then shoots with his left. So it's yeah. you know it's it's not meant for you, but you got you got okay, it and you yeah. scored so. No, and I think Perez is just too mad about it. He got an assist, yeah. and I mean it's a, it's a fantastic ball over the top as well. Yeah, Guardiola. Yeah, I mean Guardiola was I wasn't that great in both games. Obviously, that ball was amazing, but in general, both games from didn't notice it much. Yeah, I mean there were as I mistakes. as I uh, yeah as I, and a couple of mistakes obviously in the passes too, but like last month he was amazing. I, anytime he was on the ball, you noticed it. This time, rarely. Yeah, and then I think gradually Grace just took control. I mean, I looked at my yeah. phone. Uh, I think it was probably at half time, uh, Old Rapid. I uh, just clicked over to oh, like, what's going on in the game. And just the first thing I saw was just um, a post from uh, one of the large Scottish football accounts. It's like, can Luka Modric not just fucking retire already? <laughs> um, and <laughs> it pretty much says it all because he just had a spell. I mean, I don't think it. You know, it certainly wasn't to the overall 90 minute performance he put in against um, Poland in the September window. But, you know, he just had a 15 20 minute spell where, like, okay, I'm just, I'm taking this game over now. 
he was just like, listen, mate, listen, guys, I'm still Luka Modric, and watch me. Yeah. And Scotland had to. Yeah. Uh, uh, we obviously scored the second, Andre Kramaric, uh, big deflection, Karnovic is just at the back post and scores it, but uh, Croatia conceded at the 94th, 95th, Jay Adam scores, heartbreak, and I'm like, well, here we go again, we, we, we let it slip, lads. Gonna Steven have to Ger- record with Richard coming on, being like, hey, look at what we did. <laughs> and- Shay Adams 2 2, and VAR saved our asses. I mean, there's no doubt. It, it looked offside. You know, even if you just watch it for the first time, it looks offside. I mean, when I was watching it, I didn't even realize it was offside because I wasn't paying attention to Jay Adams during the play. So yeah. I was just like, oh shit. <laughs> but uh, on the replay, yeah, offside. Thankfully. Yeah, but still, for some reason, Croatia just we cannot finish a match easily. Obviously, last year, last year was against Albania and Italy. Uh, Poland, we are we got we allowed a big chance in the end, mm-hmm. and obviously against Scotland we conceded, but we are offside. Thankfully, <laughs> thank God for VAR. <laughs> um, we'll just clip that and save that <laughs> and use that against you in the future. Um, I am uh, listen. I am a fan of VAR. I'm just not a fan of the ways referees use VAR. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the win itself, um, it, it did what Croatia needed to do in terms of it's now pretty certain that you'll still be in League A next time around. Um, yeah. Because you know, obviously Scotland can catch Croatia, but it's extremely unlikely. Um, so, you know, automatic relegation. Not that it really matters for Croatia, one of the sides for whom it doesn't really matter in terms of affecting well, pots and stuff. But you know, you'd rather be in the nation league, nation league quarterfinals than not. Yeah, obviously, but uh, I mean, Poland can still jump us. Poland can, yeah. Um, but so we can go into the relegation playoff with whoever finishes second in League B. So whoever we draw, actually. I. Uh... Just, you don't know about that. You can. You can. I'm just needing to check the. If you beat Scotland, or if Poland don't better your result against Scotland in the next game, then you are through because the first tie break is head to head. I mean, yeah, we're through. We just need to beat you guys. If we beat Scotland, then we're confirmed for the top two because Poland can reach us because we obviously they didn't beat us. We beat them. And we have a draw. That's not difficult. No. Because, like, San Marino and Andorra and Liechtenstein have won games more recently than Scotland. Yeah, you. how how many... The last time you actually won a game, not counting friendlies... Yeah, the last time we won a competitive game was September last year. Yeah, last year. So Uh, a year and a month. Oh, my God. It's not so, you know, I don't want to know when we last beat... A decent side. It's been a long time. I, I mean, guess. when you beat Spain, that's probably the time. Um, doo, 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 let me just. The last time I mean, we beat a decent side. Norway or Spain? Georgia. <laughs> or Georgia, yeah. Fair Georgia, enough. June 23. So, yeah. you know, we're talking pushing a year and a half now. Yeah. Uh, one so we had a question come in from R- Rich Surich. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, obviously, just wanted our thoughts on the offici- officiating in both games. We'll get to the Poland uh, officiating, but uh, Lukas Surich scored a goal against Scotland. I don't know if you saw it. Mm-hmm. Absolute belter, amazing, amazing goal, amazing volley. But uh, the referee, as Zebes did, just called. I don't know, was it offside? I really don't remember what it was. I don't think even the commentator said what it was. It was either an offside or a foul or a handball, something of the sort. But the, there was no replay shown, so we couldn't really even see what happened. Yeah. Um, and I was watching a different sport. So You're watching a different sport. Any, um... Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Was there any was there any officiating problems at rugby? 
I mean, there's VAR, so... Yeah, I know that. I think really they started the VAR, to be honest. Um, I don't think there was anything that was too controversial, I didn't think. Um, there's some good, some meaty tackles, but... Even Fair though, enough. Fine. That's what you're there for, Fair enough. It? Exactly. Um, speaking of meaty tackles, Poland... Ah. <laughs> All right, shall we start off immediately but with the red card? Yeah. It's a red card. For me, it is. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I'm just like, I can see a referee not giving it because obviously Blokic kicks out the ball and, you know, wrong place, wrong time from both Lewandowski and Lewandowski and just, you know, the tackle happens. Not even, yeah. We can't even call the tackle. It's, Contact it's happens. Clear, it's clearance with, with contact following it. The problem is the, the speed of it. And... Yeah, I mean, both players were running. I mean, Lvakovic was running full, full speed. Landowski kind of stopped, started slowing down. But obviously, yeah, they still collide. It, it's one of those where there's not really anything either player could do differently. And, it, and, nobody, and nobody did something wrong. No. Well, I think, I do think Lewandowski made the most of it. True, but I mean, still, it was booed onto his knee. So, yeah, I mean, it probably hurt at least a little bit. Yeah, but it was full on. Ah, um, well, yeah, and rolling about bats. Hmm. It's gamesmanship, isn't it? That's what you get from a thirty, still thirty-five year old. I think. He's, yeah, I think he's still thirty-five. He's an old man. He's an old man he, yeah. Um, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Yeah, and that also came, I mean, before that we had the goal that we considered for free free. But I mean, let's gradually go through the game. So fifth minute, Poland takes the lead. I'm just like, ah, oh, here we go again. We're gonna lose, and then we're gonna be probably in the relegation playoff with whoever finishes whoever we draw from League B. Ah, oh, fine, fair enough. Okay. And for some reason we we decided to go full Barcelona in what six minutes and score free goals. Yeah, uh, I mean it was a soppy goal for the the first. If that if yeah. goal for Poland first, yeah. obviously for Zielinski, yeah, not gracious first uh, in terms of you know I think Matanovic dispossessed, is isn't it? Um, it's just too easy. Yeah, um, to to turn it over there and they pass through very nicely, fair play. But then, like you say, I mean this is a little bit we saw against Scotland in terms of um, the Cranbridge goal because obviously. Sosa comes in at the back there and it's his shot that is what's deflected up to. Yeah. Courage for his easy hair. It's this sort of late run. But I mean obviously in this in that instance, you know, it was a simple back post chance. In this instance, he's just going full um like Danny Rose. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh my god, that goal by Danny Rose, yeah. I mean I mean, just what a finish! I, the connection on the ball just smooth. Just I, I rewatched it like fifty times. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it just looks so good. Uh, and I mean, he's deserved it because he's. I mean, always on the critics because Sosa doesn't really have anything to offer except crosses. I mean, he doesn't offer that. Everybody's you know, on his ass. Yeah, he's he's always had reasons to be in the the squad. But when he's been in the squad, he's never actually really justified it. And it yeah. feels like, for him, hopefully he can turn that moment into, right, okay, I've arrived on this stage. And just start, you know, I hope he starts getting some form, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, and after that, Baturna and Petr Such just combining. Yeah, uh, you don't expect it from really in terms of just such a, a little bit of skill direct run yeah um, and really composed finish finish it's yeah not really what we see from him too much but you know it's obviously an easy combination he, for them yeah but he, i mean we saw the composed finish against monaco so i, I was like okay yeah you can be a but, you, you can be a striker if you want yeah i mean if that's something you can develop into his game more regularly then yeah He's going to be a big. Um, he obviously has a knack for it. Yeah, yeah. It's just getting, it's getting the timing, isn't it? And it helps. Yeah. You know, like you say, when you've got your teammate there to 
combine with at international level. And yeah. then uh, speaking of said teammate. Uh, yeah, the, nice finish through the legs of Borka. Yeah. Just a little, just a little poke. Yeah, it's again, it's sort of similar to in in terms of the first goal, Poland scored similar to that in terms of just sloppiness. Um, yeah, I mean both both defenses were on holiday. Yeah, um, and but I mean you know it's a good run from him to sort of take that straight line for the reverse pass, and then as you say you know it's a very composed finish yeah uh um, and then and then just before halftime we concede and as dalit said and many others we let poland back into the game but before the third goal we had so we put him immediately with his first touch of the ball had an amazing chance volka save, makes an amazing save other we had perisic with a good shot kramaric with a good shot just either just going past or Borka making a save, which obviously then resulted into us conceding, because if you don't score, you're probably going to concede it. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, let's be fair to both goalkeepers. Um, the quality of goals in the game was... Very good. High. Very, I mean, everybody put their chances, uh, put away their chances as 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 good as they uh, as good as they could have. Every every yeah. shot was on point. Yeah, but like you indicated in, in with with Scotland, you know, you've got to close. It's not just games; it's halves as well. Because obviously after yeah. Zalewski's goal, Kaminski had a really big chance. In, in, yeah, in time to level it up. Yeah, and and Livarco just saved it, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. No, Otherwise, we would have gone pre pre at the break, and Poland may have won it at the end. Yeah. Now, once you go down to ten, then. Poland didn't really do much. Um, yeah, you know, they didn't. They I mean, we, we, uh, yeah, we. Top. I mean, we completely closed down. Yeah, but maybe we that's... parked the bus. Yeah, which is an acceptable strategy and maybe something yeah. that should be done a bit more. <laughs> yeah, and was also Perisic played both matches against Scotland and Poland for. I mean, and he got subbed against Scotland, but that was just like two minutes before the end, so. Can't even count it. So he played two full matches, which I mean, good to see because obviously he he was amazing in Scotland. Now nah, he was okay against Poland, not the best. Obviously, bear in mind he's not a right wing back. Yeah, he's not a right wing back. But who else are we gonna play? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, I think that's the thing. It's going to be interesting to see when Juranovic slash Stanisic are fit. Um, what is actually going to do? Well, we're going to see in March, unless they get injured again, which hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I have a feeling we'll stick with it. Yeah, I think it, it, it seems to be working. Juranovic would fit really well into it. Stanisic yeah. would fit well into it as a centre-back. Yeah. Um, it's another so... choice for centre-back if if you if you still you can still have your and if uh, let's say Charles that's is suspended or Elish is suspended shortly even just put yeah. Stanisic. It's almost it's so you go back to the Scotland what um Clark did quite early in his reign because these are other players who don't always stay fit when uh Andy Robertson and Kieran Tierney. You know, yeah you have one as your left wing back, one as your left centre back and you're fitting them in and getting both in and getting the most out of both because particularly when you're having that natural wide player playing as your as on either side of you you center you also then have a bit more mobility to bring the ball yeah up. yeah anyways uh let me go back to the officiating questions from rich uh so obviously we commented on the red card i mean i can as i said i can see both sides on it i guess so it's either you're gonna give the foul and if you're giving the foul it's a red or you don't give it. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, and I, I saw I saw a good suggestion because obviously, as we said, nobody's at fault. Both players, you know, got went for the ball. Livakovic got there first, kicked it, and sadly con <laughs> collision happened. And I saw, saw a good suggestion. If you know, if you don't want this other as a red card, then something like in F1 that you have like a racing incident where obviously, you know. Two drivers collide, but nobody's really at fault. It's a racing incident, you know. Somebody obviously 
got a DNF from that, probably crashed, but it's a racing incident, move on. So, you know, then they suggested footballing incident. So, you know, if we don't want that, if, if we don't want that gray area, the refs can give that or can't. So if you want, like, for it to be just no cards at all, just mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. Or make it so that any kind of any, anything of the sort just red card immediately. Just let's not have the gray area. I, because just... because because one side is going to be absolutely fuming. Yeah, I mean, that suggestion just kind of suggests that you view Roy Keane like Pastor Maldonado, but I do. Um... <laughs> but <I> mean... yeah, <laughs> it's it's like the Simbin option, isn't it? Uh, yeah, like that. You know, you're trying to think of creative ways around it, but even then, that wouldn't really work with a goalkeeper um, because you'd have to have a goalkeeper. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he also asked for Project High and Out slash youth players on the 2026 squad. I mean, Luka Vuskovic. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, no, I've got, I've got the, the question. So we had a, another question about Buskovic, we just did hide it. Let Buskovic go too early. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna do it off. Yeah, I, I was gonna transition into that. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I think yeah, the thing with Buskovic is where you're gonna fit him, um, because if everyone's fit at the back, you have there are three good centre backs in Bardiol, Shuttle, and Stanisic, as you mean, yeah, at the back. So, and Charles Atzar has done a very good job at, as the yeah. cent center center back. He, he has, because he's natural at that at yeah. level. But I mean, you know, if we're honest, here, he's there as a, as a stopgap. Yeah. Um, so where does Buskovic fit into that picture? Because, I mean, who who would you be dropping Sutil off? Presumably. But would you? I don't know. Um, you said I mean, depends. Happens. Depends how Dalic sees Stanisic. Does he see him on the right wing back? Does he see him as a substitute for Juranovic, or doesn't see him as you know a centre back, as yeah. the right side of centre back? I think if Vuskovic was to come in, he would be the middle centre back. So that gives you more leeway to you know put him in. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll see. It'd be a nice problem to have. Yeah, and for how to letting him go too early. I mean, he could have got injured. He, yeah, I mean, he could have gotten injured, especially on on the pitches Haiduk played last season. Uh, so I mean, he could have gotten injured. Haiduk last season was obviously at, at a high point, but at the same time, you're gonna sell him. You could sell him if you keep him for two seasons, and he does amazing. He, you can sell him for more, but at sixteen, you don't know that. No, you only have to look at his brother to know how wrong things can go. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, selling him at 16 for the money, I mean, we got, what, 13 million, if I'm not mistaken? Good money for a 16-year-old that, I mean, if he succeeds, then everybody's going to be like, well, Heidek make a made a mistake. But when we sold him, everybody was like, yeah, the highest transfer fee up for a 16-year-old ever. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what was Palaverta? He was up there. Uh, Palaverta's transfer fee? Yeah. When he moved I think to like City, it was. I think like eight or seven. Yeah, now, seven. It's just under seven million. Yeah, I think ask ask that question about him. It was that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, okay. Don't get me wrong. He's doing very well at Aberdeen, but you know, you no one would say, okay, actually, you got the you got the most out of him there. Yeah. Yeah, and the Kaiduk needs to sell players, so you know. Especially when we don't get into Europe, so I mean, if 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 we had Vuskovic, then we had to sell, then we have to sell somebody else. Yeah, we put. Well, you probably have to sell two or three somebody else's. Yeah, and couldn't Valio Durtov? I mean, too early to tell. Yeah, too early to tell. I mean, it's just you're we're speaking about what three, four games of Durtov that that he's actually you know been very good. Yeah. In, um, yeah, so Osijek, Dinamo, Gorica, Drieka was fine, and obviously and Shibnik was very good again. So and, we're just speaking about five games here. And on top of that, it's domestic competition. I don't want to belittle it, but well, yeah, but, but if you were making a comparison in terms of other players, 
in similar environments, you'd probably be looking at Andrew Maximovic, who's yeah. they start against in the um, start against Parzan did very well. Um, you know, who's who would you be buying at this point? Probably be Maximovic. That would probably be who would be making more money at, at this point. For Ludov, you know, I think we're a good year, 18 months yeah. away from him moving, unless someone comes in with silly money. Yeah, and Keicho also added another big sale for a player which likely won't make it into the first team of the team he is heading to, which is obviously Tottenham. Uh, while he also didn't play a lot of games for Hyrule, he even played less than Palaversa, Pashalic, and others. He's He was 16, that's the whole mm-hmm. point of what everybody knew about Voskovic at age 14. From yeah. sc- Scouts maybe in 13. You and had also, players, you had clubs looking at him from 13, 14, 100%. And also, if you're doing well in Belgium, why? And Poland, too. And, and, and Poland, too. have a chance of getting into a he, in the uh, squad. Definitely. He's yeah. He's I mean he's he was very good at Hajduk. Well, he, for the half season for the what three months he played for us. Poland Radomiak was very good, and then obviously Westerlo this season. What has four goals is the top goal scorer along with Frigan uh, for Westerlo in Belgium. So I mean for a centre back that's crazy, but mm-hmm. he's yeah. he's shown himself that he's you know on the level in Poland and in Belgium and the next step is what maybe the Netherlands and then you can make the step into the Premier League yeah he's probably hitting everything on the development path his first half yeah. and he's probably hitting everything on that yeah and if he stayed at Hajduk he what, would have been very good at Hajduk but then would have gotten a sold against Tottenham and then he would have been alone so yeah. you would have hampered his uh, progression by a by a season or two, yeah. But yeah, uh, any other players that that could uh, make the um, the twenty twenty six squad? No, Amikic is a big project, but obviously, I think he'll he won't even be close to the national team by then. He'll probably be in the Dynamo starting squad in next season, probably. Yeah, I mean, I think you know you've got to look more at less at who would come in, and more at who would go out. And I don't yeah. think the only candidate really to go out is Perisic. Yeah, and I mean Modric is because reportedly will reportedly get another another year on his contract for Real Madrid. So yeah, he's, fair enough. He's, he's going to be there, you know, bar, yeah. barring injury. Perisic is is the one who might Perisic and maybe Budimir might age out as well. But for Budimir, you know, in, in that striking yeah. role, there's so much. You know, you just pick Elio. Yeah. Um, Perisic is the one, but I mean, again, you you sort of look at who's injured at the minute. Anyway, if Perisic retired today, he wouldn't really be missed. I mean, probably. I mean, yeah. At this as, at as a this age, he'd be missed, but not yeah, not on the on, yeah on the on the pitch. Yeah, I got that. Uh, <laughs> obviously, we had we had a few questions about Bosnia. <laughs> uh, heads up to. Franz Ravica, who asked, who asked, uh, who asked about Mario, <laughs> was Mario Kovacic is Mario Kovacic having a tough time? Uh, actually, let me actually translate it. Uh, was it worse for Mario Kovacic during the siege of Sarajevo, or is it worse now that he has to live in Koprivnica? Never been I, actually. Don't fucking <laughs> belittle that. You have Dog Stanovic. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Ivan Dogstanovich. <laughs> Have you told your wife why he's named? Yes, she knows. Okay. The kids know as well. <laughs> the kids know about Ivan Krstanovich. Yeah. My, my, my son at the minute is going through a, a thing where they're all playing football at school and he the, 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 the... showed no interest in football whatsoever. There's like uh... two footballers he can name, Rashford and Ivan Krstanovich. <laughs> so probably like I as a kid when you play football, you're like, I'm Lionel Messi. And your kid is there just like, I'm Ivan Kristanovic, mate. Uh, I think you'll find my son is stood there on the sidelines, um, <laughs> not getting past him. Um, well, that's Ivan Kristanovic uh, yeah. during during his last seasons where, well, not even his last seasons where he was still active, but just not playing for anybody. So he just went and got his uh, coaching licenses. Yeah, he's, just, he's here for... Um, here for the 
pens. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, let's shortly go over the next round and we can end this. Um, oh, I'm going to jump. Okay. Anyways, I'll, 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 I'll shortly preview it. We can very well, we can very rapidly. We can very Okay. Look, 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 uh, Rijeka, I mean, need to get something if they, you know, want to, to get back on form. Yeah. Uh, after after uh, not playing great against Slavin, not playing again, not playing great against Hajduk, but obviously Derby, so we can excuse that as we said. Yeah. Lokomotiva probably still need the points. Yeah, obviously, but they're coming off a win, so we'll see if they can catch some form, get some rhythm. They're yeah. playing at home, so you know. No, no, it's not the easiest job to beat Lokomotiva away. No. Kaiduk didn't do it. Uh, uh, Shibani Kosiek can, uh, I mean, we'll see if uh, Cartello can, uh, how he'll start his management job. Can he beat Osiek as Saravich did in the high, uh, at the start of the season? Or will Osiek just get a wrench? Win. Yeah, for some reason. Kapitel is just going to come in, lads. Play like shit. Yeah. And it's going to work. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Istra Dinamo. Uh, I'm looking forward to the match, actually, because I don't think Dinamo is going to be full strength. Mm-hmm. And Istra least... better than, what was it, 5-0 on the opening day. They were much yeah, better than that. Th- that they, they were better than that. So we'll see if they can. Obviously, Istra at home is better than Istra away. I mean, you would hope so as a fan. Yeah. Of Istra. Yeah, but uh, we'll... we'll they have to hit their marks, and they will get something eventually. Yeah, the Dynamo won't be full strength for at least the full match, so they're probably going to have us. If Baturna is going to play, he's probably going to get subbed at the 60th or 70th minute, so yeah. try and get something in the last 20, 30 minutes. But up until then, don't concede. If you do, then yikes. Uh, Slavin Hajduk, uh, Slavin away, obviously has been a task for... I mean, Slavin posted about it today. Uh, Slavin said... Uh, Dynamo came in, in into our game against against us. They were first in the table. The game ended. We beat them. They they weren't first anymore. Rijeka came in, faced us, drew to us. They also weren't first after that. And now Hajduk's coming on. And guess what? They're first. Yeah. And a Hajduk fan and a Hajduk fan come and a Hajduk commented. Yeah, and a Hajduk fan commented. And you were bottom after all these matches. After all those matches, and you're still gonna be bottom after this match. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so uh, a little bit of shit housery from both sides, which yeah. love to see it. Uh, Varazdin Gorica. Yeah, I mean that's just that has to be Varazdin. It has to be Varazdin, but I mean that's just a crap way to end the end the weekend, isn't it? Yeah, I I really hate that they have Varazdin Gorica ending the week, yeah. and Lokomotiva and Lokomotiva Rijeka being on Friday, like because it's not Easter, obviously. But um, it, like, yeah, Easter is right there. Like you can give Dynamo yeah. another day to prepare for Salzburg. Exactly. <laughs> and you put Easter on, on Friday, so you're just following your rules. But no. But yeah. Anyways, let's end it because you obviously yeah. have to go, and I'm gonna go eat dinner. <laughs> Enjoy. Enjoy. Anyways, bye bye guys. Uh, bye from Dubrovnik. Bye from. Uh, your house you haven't moved so (laughs) (laughs) this is the new setup guys for me not for him yeah anyways bye 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 bye